Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, it's game day on the East Coast. The Sens are icing as close to an NHL lineup as we've seen so far this preseason when they take on Sidney Crosby and the Penguins tonight in Halifax. And they're coming off a 4-2 win against the Panthers last night where Drake Batherson excelled in his old stomping grounds. Love to see it. We've got recap. We've got a look ahead to tonight and roster battles heating up while another soldier falls. Lassie Thompson claimed by the Anaheim Ducks off of waivers. All that's coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 885 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, today's edition of Locked On Senators is brought to you by us. You can go follow us on Twitter at Send Central on Instagram, LockedOn.Senators. Today is Monday, October 2nd, and Pillsy. I'm officially nervous about Josh Norris. Not in the lineup tonight in Halifax, while well, basically every other NHLer who signed is. Yeah, I think, like, at this point, Ross, it's not so much about, like, where does Josh Norris fit in the lineup? Who's going to be his line mates? Anything like that. We just want to see him play in a hockey game. Any hockey game. Exhibition, preseason, a friendly, uh, maybe some shinny. Any hockey game with a regular jersey, let's just see Josh Norris playing. And I know we're on different sides of this. You want to see him take face-offs. I, I don't need to see him take face-offs. Let's just, let's just get him out there. And it looks like Sens fans will continue to have to wait for that to happen. The next chance would be Winnipeg on Thursday, then Montreal on Saturday. That's it for preseason, finally. But yeah. this game's going to feel like an NHL game. I think out of all the preseason games, in a 10,000 seat barn, we heard how loud it got during the World Juniors. I've been in it when I lived out in Halifax for a couple of years. It is an amazing place to watch a hockey game. The Sens are going to feel like the road team, though, yeah. with Sidney Crosby in town. How many 87 jerseys do you think they're going to be in there out of 10,000 seats? It's it's going to be a lot of them. Like the, this is essentially uh, a Sidney Crosby homecoming party, and uh, it's tough for the other East Coasters out there. I'm sure they they had a tough time getting tickets for their family with uh, the Crosby gang, probably scooping up a lot of them. But hey, that's that's how it goes. As Sens fans, we're used to Sidney Crosby stealing the spotlight. We're very used to that. Yeah, we certainly are. But what a what a cool moment. What a cool uh, initiative and. You know how competitive Sidney Crosby is. You know that he he definitely went up to the office and said, you know we're playing every single one of our star players. Like <laughs> Eric Carlson will play against the Sens yeah. for the first time as a Pittsburgh Penguin. You got Malkin in the lineup, everybody. It's an opening night lineup. Uh, we'll get to Ottawa's in just a second because there are two placeholders because Shane Pinto still isn't signed. And it's starting to feel a little more contentious. Remember, it was all daisies, roses, just saying, hey, everybody's just got to wait. It'll work out. They'll clear cap space. We thought the deal was close. Turns out, now both sides are digging their heels into the ground. Some would call it an old-fashioned negotiation. Others would say this is getting out of hand. I want to throw to you by saying this. Louis Gross, his agent, is also the agent for Rasmus Sandin, who missed half of training camp last year holding out, and William Nylander, who held out until minutes before the deadline in November. So he's no stranger to having his clients stand firm for what they believe they're worth. Now the question is, what is Shane Pinto worth, and how does this all come together? Well, he, he's the holdout guy, I guess. Uh, he's the agent that this is what he does, apparently. Um, look, I don't... We've said it multiple times on the show, and I feel like most people are of, of this mind, Ross, is we don't hold this against Shane Pinto. He deserves more 
than one year, $1 million, as was reported the offer um, the Sens gave him reported by Elliot Friedman. So that's probably a pretty clear, truthful report as Elliot Friedman, one of the best in the biz. So, I mean, I'd be upset too if that's all this time we've been waiting in negotiation and that's what you're you're pushing across, uh, written down on the napkin across the table. Like, no, I'm crumpling that up and throwing it right back in Pierre Dorian's face. That's that's not even close to getting it done here. No, but I will say this. There has to be a middle ground because if the yes. rumors are true and you said the recent offer, but also he, he mentioned the Sens aren't comfortable going above $2.5 million. And it's like, that that shouldn't be what it costs. Let's like yeah. the Sens already did chain Pinto a favor from the standpoint, and he had leverage. He could have gone back to school for his junior year, but at the same time, it's like he mit- he got his first year burned off his entry level deal, which all young kids do. But then the second season, he missed with injury almost all but what five six games, and it's like okay, you've played ninety nine games. It was great to see him play eighty two. But I, I think a bridge deal is perfect for both sides. And yeah. Morgan Frost deal, two years, $2.1 million per season. Bruce Garriock seemed to hint that that's kind of what the Sens are looking at right now, is two years at two point one. I think that if, if that's the deal, I think that's fair. One point one's a joke. We tweeted that out at Sens Central when that came out. But anything above two at two or less years, I think is very fair for the, the sample size we've been able to see. Yeah, I think that's fair as well. And look, I, I've said it before, but the Ottawa Senators have to use their leverage uh, power here, especially since Shane Pinto is one of those rare cases where there can't be a offer sheet. He's got no arbitration rights. So like they literally have all the power here. Where they lose power is looking at Josh Norris not being able to play in preseason games and being like, what's this team's number one weakness? slow starts and the last thing you want is a a hurt or injured josh norris and then no shane pinto and now you're what was seemingly good center depth being absolutely abysmal and you're off to a poor start again and the whole season's written off by november just because you couldn't clear the gap between one million dollars for a third line rfa sentiment like there's a lot at stake here with a small window of value being the issue. And I think that's why things are so frustrating Ross is because they need to start off right here and they can't have an issue in camp where there's awkward feelings or tension around the locker room. They can't have their center depth, not providing help for all the wingers and all the depth they have up front. Now, if they lose those guys up the middle, that's a big, big issue. And Shane Pinto, on the other hand, though, this is a guy that's got to play games. Like, if he wants to up his value and prove prove his value, you mentioned it, 99 games. Sure, he had a great 20 goal. Well, great, maybe he's pushing it. But for all intensive purposes, he had a good season last year with 20 goals, playing an elevated role uh, since Josh Norris wasn't there. But, man, if you want to stay competitive and if uh, you're a guy in your early 20s as a centerman, missing games is not a recipe for success. Just feels like one year, 2.2, something like that. Hey, he wore 22 at uh, Nodak. He's probably going to change that number when he signs his deal. I know players love their little intricacies. Just give him 2.2 and have it done with. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't get it done. I feel like it should, though, on a one-year deal. Yeah, that's the thing. As long as long as it's not more than two years, anywhere around two million, we'll get we'll get this done, in my opinion. Because the Senators are in cap hell right now. They've got one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in cap space as it stands today on cap friendly. But at the same time, it's only this year that they're in that trouble. Yeah. After this year, Bobby Ryan's money's off the books. Matt Murray's money's off the books. Tarasenko's five millions off the books now. Say what you want and the cap is rumored to go up about four million. So like they're like. They, they can take care of this very easily next year. They just need to get through right now. Exactly. But you can't overpay to make it one year. It's it's no. kind of, they've gotten themselves in this mess and I'm very intrigued to see how they're going to get it out. Now we have a lot of listeners on the East Coast and they're like, come on, don't talk about the guys who aren't in the lineup. We want to hear about the guys who are. So coming up after the break, we will get to today's lineup. What to expect from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Okay, a lot of the Lassie discourse was was discussed on Twitter yesterday. We will have our thoughts on that. But if this was a Sunday show, that would have been the lead. 
We're going to leave that till the end of the show. The Lassie Thompson being claimed by the Anaheim Ducks. I also want to get in a little bit with camp battles, but that'll also kind of weave into next segment because there are five players. We know Drake Batherson is because of family reasons, but four other players who were in the lineup in Cape Breton yesterday, who are in the lineup tonight in Halifax. What does that mean? We'll discuss next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors is back. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million, 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And this is my favorite part, with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time, or you get your money back. It's easy, because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that dub. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Farm to Fork. Farm to Fork is a premium meat and seafood delivery company that services Ontario, Quebec, and Nunavut as well. Now, if you are needing a bit of a reminder, Thanksgiving is coming up. Thanksgiving next Sunday. Get your meats from farm to fork delivery they'll bring it right to your door no hassle no stress and they've got an amazing selection just head over farm to fork delivery.ca with the number two farm to fork delivery.ca and taste the farm to fork difference all of their meats are grown organically naturally no chemicals no additives none of that bad stuff everything that you want and I'm not only talking about the turkeys and the hams, but you should get on that for Thanksgiving. They have everything you need. So stock the freezer up at farm to fork delivery.ca. How can you get a little bit of a helping from Ross Levitan and Brandon Pillar here at Locked On Senators? We'll use our promo code LOSP10. Gets you 10% off your first purchase. It's a local company. Great guy started it. And he is helping you guys get prepared for Thanksgiving. So taste the farm to fork difference. You will never go back to grocery store meats. All right, Pilsy. I want to give you some early congratulations, Pilsy. Oh. Looks like you're going to win episode nine of the Ring of Honor. I, I'm I'm not accepting your congratulations. There's still two days left in voting. It's becoming a very wide margin. As per usual, my late picks will determine my fate. Going with Dominic Hasek's mask in uh, as my fourth pick and the best goalie mask in Ottawa Senators history will either make or break me, and uh, we'll find out. So get your votes in, guys. Get your votes in at Send Central on Twitter. And if you missed it yesterday with all the hoopla around hoopla. the game in Cape Breton, then head over to YouTube or wherever you download your podcast. You can listen every Sunday. We've got the Ring of Honor where we each draft our four favorites of any particular topic. You can go back and catch up on any of those who you may have missed over the last couple of months. Next week will be the final one for now. Because with the excitement of the season, we've got so much to discuss. We're going to put it on the shelf for now. I know, very sad. But it'll be 10 episodes deep. And if Pilsy can pull off the victory today, which I hope he can, then I will still have an opportunity next week to tie Martian for first place. It's 4-3-1 right now. So very exciting stuff, Pilsy, going on over at the Ring of Honor. Also exciting tonight to see a near full NHL lineup. We're expecting Eunice Corpusallo to play the entirety of tonight's game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And well, why don't we check in on how the rest of the Ottawa Senators are going to line up in tonight's game. Pilsy, would you like to do the honors? All right, let's do it. Here's the lineup up against the Pittsburgh Penguins in Halifax. Brady Kachuk, the captain, is back. Full cage. Full cage, though. And you know what? I, I don't blame him. Preseason game, he got he got 
um, like his face got carved by that stick in practice. So you got to protect yourself here if you're Brady. Yeah, it was like he, like a pumpkin, just, you know, getting Honestly. abused. And um, no, I was going to say college kid, right? He's good. He's worn the cage before. He'll be fine. Yeah, he knows all about the cage. Uh, then you got Tim Stutzla with Claude Giroux. Love Tarasenko it. still on the left side with Ridley Gregg and Drake Matheson. You got Dominic Kubalik, Rook Chartier, and Matthew Joseph. And rounding out the fourth line, Highmore, Astapchuk, and McEwen. On the back end, we've got Chikrin and Shabbat, Sanderson and Zub, Eric Brandstrom with Travis Hamanick. I've been alluding to the five men who have played in both games or are expected to play in both games. It's Drake Batherson. It's Rourke Chartier. It's Matthew Highmore. It's Zach McEwen. And it's Eric Brandstrom. What does it mean? I don't <laughs> I don't really know what it means, Ross. I guess they're just trying to um, trying to get that decor kind of having chemistry and understanding uh, what their roles are and getting chemistry with their respective partners, I guess. Well, up front, I mean, there's some battles going on in the bottom six. We can expect that top nine is basically set. Just put Norris where Ridley Gregg is and put Shane Pinto where Rourke Chartier, or yeah, where Rourke Chartier is. I mean, in a perfect world, mm. you got to figure out the cap around that though. But I think this might be a final audition. For Matthew Highmore, Zach Astapchuk, and Zach McEwen even. I wouldn't be surprised if McEwen goes on waivers. He was making uh, way too many mistakes for a guy on your fourth line. You want him to play simple, but you want him to be somewhat effective and not just turn the puck over. Whenever it touches his stick, it feels like it's on the other team's stick next. That I'm not been a big fan of. Highmore, I think he impressed more early in camp, got the chance. He's from Halifax as well, so it'll be cool for him to experience the hometown vibe tonight. I think he's probably going down to Belleville after this game where we expect him to be a guy who could come up and, and play in a pinch, but should be the leader in points for the Belleville Sens this year. He would have been if his production last year in Springfield in the AHL was in Belleville. And then a stab Chuck, I mean, he hasn't had a chance to play as much as he or the team probably would have liked missing the first game or two because of injury uh, sustained in rookie camp. But I think this might be a last chance for them. I honestly look at it a little bit from a different perspective. And Parker Kelly got the goal in last night's yep. game. Kelly was skating with Kastelik and Igor Sokolov this morning. I'm curious what that means. But then Yuri Smekal, who's ar not arguably, he's been the best player on the bubble. Um, yep. He's not playing back-to-back -back games. But again, I wonder, let's, let's, let me ask you about Yuri Smekal, and then we'll go back to the lineup tonight. With, with Smekal, me. he mentioned it after the game yesterday. He's like, it's a lot playing like every other night, right? That's something that I think doesn't get appreciated enough. These European leagues, they play a couple times a week, but I don't think it's as rigorous as a schedule as no. the NHL. So how do you think that could play in to the longevity of Yuri Smeikau? Well, I think uh, the one advantage he has, Ross, is he is older. He's 26 and he has a lot of pro experience, albeit in uh, European leagues like you're referencing. So not quite as rigorous as some of um, AHL or NHL seasons are, but look, he, he's clearly the front runner here. Like as far as I'm concerned, Yuri Smekel has made this team. It's just what kind of role is he going to have? Is he going to be an everyday guy? Is he going to get uh, a chance on the third line? Is he going to be mostly playing on the fourth line? Is he going to be an extra that just uh, gets inserted into the lineup here or there? But I think he's shown really well and he's earned himself uh, at least the front running spot uh, in some of these bottom six battles. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Smekal has been super impressive. Very Who's good. Your player to watch. You're locked on player to watch for the Ottawa Senators in tonight's game. Oh, uh, wait, before I get to that though, Ross, I want to make a comment on Smekal. He got um, hit, tripped up. I don't know, just uh, involved in a physical altercation. We'll go with that. I don't remember the exact play, but he ends up falling into the boards pretty hard. Like one of those where you fall a couple feet before the boards, and then you slide into it and just absolutely get rocked. So that happened to him. He goes off to the bench, and then a little later on, the refs go to the bench, and they're talking to Schmeichel and DJ Smith. I believe they might have got a hint from a concussion spotter being like, uh, he's got to go. And <laughs> Schmeichel is just, he's not having it. Like, he just says, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then uh, I always forget his name. What's the trainer's name? Dom Toletta? Dom Nicoletta. Dom Nicoletta. Ah, that's it. I was close. 
he comes over right away and tells the ref, no, 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 he's fine. Don't worry about him. And the refs are like, eh, we like, we kind of have to enforce this. And Smake was just like, I will not be accepting those terms. And he just stays on the bench and the refs are like, well, we tried drop the puck. <laughs> I guess the uh, protocol is a little different up in Cape Breton. Well, I bet Yuri is just like, I am not missing an opportunity to play in these preseason games. These are pivotal for my career. I'm sorry, Mr. Ref, but I'm not letting uh, hitting the boards in Sydney, Nova Scotia, stop my chances at becoming an NHL player. So I will be staying right here. Uh, I I don't know whether I respect that or not, but it was just fun. You love it. You love it. I do, I do love it. He, you you got to want to stay in the uh, game. But concussions are very serious and should be taken uh, with extreme caution. Um, player to watch here for me, Ross. Locked on. Player to watch. Oh, we're, t- we're doing locked on for, uh, for oh, yeah. the preseason? Okay. This is this is not this does not feel like preseason, Pilsy. It's True. an amazing location. We got a full NHL-ish roster. No, we're good. I was going to go Drake Batherson, but he had his moment and he had his time uh, in Cape Breton. So I'm going to pivot from that. He is going to score tonight, though. I mean, he, he's he got to show up Sidney Crosby, definitely. I'm going to go with Ridley Gregg here. I mean, this is a big opportunity for him playing uh, with Tarasenko and Batherson, especially with all the talk we are we have. No Josh Norris, Shane Pinto not signed still. Ridley Gregg could have an elevated... Like, he could be this year's Shane Pinto, Ross, where, like... Really, he should be a bottom six guy, but he's going to have to play out a default in the top six as a centerman, which he already kind of did last year for a little bit. So we'll see how this goes, especially with Tarasenko in the mix here. That's a very different uh, uh, vibe than he's used to. Although I guess Tarasenko and Dabrinka, there's some similarities there as snipers, but this is big for Greg, in my opinion. Yeah, I like that call out. Ridley Gregg, second line center, where he played a lot of his 20 games in the NHL last yeah. year because of similar circumstances. My locked on player tonight is Thomas Shabbat. I got a first hand look at Thomas Shabbat in this building. When I lived in Halifax, it was one of the years that Shabbat was playing in St. John. He scored a breakaway overtime winner <laughs> in Halifax, and he was the best player on the ice. I think I posted on Facebook. I said, This guy's going to be an NHL superstar. Hey, I, I left no no filter there nice. for any sort of reality. I was completely delusioned. But I was right after he won World Juniors MVP and yep. all that. Now, Thomas Shabbat, I think he's been decent this preseason. But I think now that we're starting to gear it up here, he needs to be at his very best the first 10 games of the regular season. There's, there's just no reason why, I mean, a lot of the key guys, like the start, you, there's no excuses. And I think we're going to grade these players a lot harder than we have in the past this year because the standard has yep. risen. There are seriously no excuses uh, for what they're being paid and for what the product that uh, on paper this team can put on the ice. But Thomas Shabbat is like right up there with Josh Norris, the goaltenders, as the X factors for this season. And I want to see Thomas Shabbat play at his very best tonight in Halifax. Let me ask you this. Once the preseason is over, the regular season is here. Do you want that defense pair to be chicken on the left and Shabbat on the right still? Or are you kind of like, okay, that was preseason. That was fun. Let's get back to uh, your regular programming here with Shabbat on the left side. Yeah, well, they've they've talked about how it's going to alternate through plays, and I get that. But, yeah, I I would like it to be Shabbat on the left and Chikrin on the right here as we go into the regular season, at least to start. If they want to get wild after and they're playing well, and maybe Shabbat's making some plays from the right side, sure. But game one, man, you got to have Shabby in that top left spot. It's tough, though, Ross, because I feel like Chikrin has really excelled on the left side. But... With Shabbat not looking great on the right side, you kind of it's kind of a wash there. And then I think Shabbat's much better on the left side. But then I don't want to say Chikrin's bad on the right side, but he's he's so so good on the left side. So it's it's kind of a weird weird situation to be in. And th- these are some of the concerns I had when we talked about bringing Chikrin into the Ottawa Centers before he was traded here. Because sure, you you can get the le- left side playing on the right, but. Man, it would be just so much easier if you had left shot, right shot, and you didn't have to worry about it. Well, the right side is even thinner than it's been in the past Mm. because Lassie Thompson was claimed, well, first placed and then claimed off of waivers by the Anaheim Ducks. We've got thoughts on last night's game in Cape Breton and Friday night's game against Winnipeg that was ultimately the demise of Lassie Thompson, the 2019 first-round pick. 
with the, his time with the Senators organization. Now, 32 Thoughts had a very interesting note about maybe some potential friction between the player and the club. We'll touch on that next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Athletic Greens. Ross, you're you're dealing with a bit of a bug right now. What I would suggest to you is get some AG1 in your system. That cup of water you have right there? I already had my AG1 today. You already know that, though. You already did. Okay, I was going to say, you could easily turn that cup of water into something that can help you live a healthier lifestyle with one scoop of AG1. That's it, Ross. It's just one scoop in your glass of water every day, and you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and more so you can start your day off right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of those things. You don't need to reach into your pill box. You don't need to have a million different pills to get it. You can do it all with one delicious scoop of AG1. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, guys, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Pilsy, here we are in the final audition for NHL jobs. After tonight's game in Halifax, the Senators will ship up to a resort nearby in Nova Scotia for golf and team bonding. Then the team will fly right from Halifax to Winnipeg. Apparently it's on the way to Ottawa where they'll play a preseason game against the Winnipeg Jets. I will be in attendance to that game. We might even record Friday's LOSB right when I get home. Woo. A couple Molsons into me. We'll be feeling good in that one. We also have an enormous guest coming up this week on yes. Locked On Senators. So stay tuned for that. The best way to know when, when new videos drop is to subscribe to the YouTube channel and wherever you download your podcast. A five star review on Apple does go a long way as well. If you want to help the show grow, we are very appreciative of any help there. Pilsy, mm. here's a question for you. We already pulled up the roster, but I'm going to do it one more time because I want to ask you how many players that are playing in tonight's game will not be in the opening day lineup for the Ottawa Senators? Okay, yeah, hit me hit me with the lineup here. Basically, it's the two middle, middle six centermen. They, they, the question really becomes, unless you think Travis Hamannick isn't going to start on bottom right D, which I think he will. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to start actually from the crease out. Uh, Mad Sogard will not be there in the opening uh, lineup. That's going to okay. be Corpus Allo and Forsberg. Hard ass. Um, well, hey, I'm just trying to answer your question properly here. Uh, the decor is set. This will be the decor. Yep. Ridley Gregg will be in the opening night lineup. Mm. Rourke Chartier will not be in the opening night lineup. Highmore will not be in the opening night lineup. Stapchuk will not be in the opening night lineup. And Zach McEwen will not be in the opening yeah. night lineup. Okay, so you think this is this is it for that fourth line as well? I mentioned that's how I feel. And then we'll see, really, Smakow, Sokolov, Kastelik, Kelly. And here's a guy I want to talk about as we wrap up yesterday's game on the weekend. And heck, he played both games so far. He played Friday and Sunday. Roby Yarventi has really established himself as a serious contender to make this team. How do you feel about him playing center now, Ross? I know you kind of uh, were like, ah, th- this experiment is is enough. But like now, are you are you sold on him being a centerman, or would or do you still feel like it's an out of necessity type move? I don't know. I can't say anything. He's been the, one of the best players on the team this preseason. So who am I to say anything? I think he's looked great. He even showed like. 
Uh, I mean, this is pr- the goal he scored against Winnipeg is probably more of a winger's goal. Like he was coming in from the right side and like made a made a strong cut to the net backhand and and uh, and was able to put put a goal past uh, uh, Laurent Brassois, I believe it was in net. And it, it was just an interesting uh, change here for for Roby Arventi. But hey, he looks great. So no, keep him at center. And this is a guy I think will be in the lineup in Winnipeg, if not against Montreal, the final preseason game because. He certainly agree. doesn't deserve to go down after the way he's played. Yep, I agree. I think he's looked good. Uh, I think he's someone that can provide some offense in the bottom six if if they're still without Norris and or Pinto moving forward. He's a guy I would give I would give a look, honestly. I, I've liked Roby Arventi, and if you're looking at Josh Norris, uh, shoot first centerman with a great shot. Roby Arventi, also a great shot, and like you mentioned, he's able to just come in rip one past the goalie if he's got time and space in the shooting lane and he can create a really good offensive chance so keep your eyes out for Roby Arventi this season that's what I'll say seriously I think that the two guys who have elevated in all the names that we've mentioned who are battling for spots Roby Arventi would be number one and Yuri Smekal would be number two and then I'd I'd clump the rest I think I would flip those, Ross. I think Smekal has shown shown more than uh, Roby Arventi. That's not to take away from Yarventi. It's just simply elevating Smekal. Interesting. Well, let us know in the comments who you think stood out the most in preseason up front. Now, Pilsy, as we we lead in here with Lassie Thompson being claimed by Anaheim, Mm -hmm. I almost think it's time to just cut bait with 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 JBD too. Let's just get all these former first round picks out the door. I, I don't know what I don't know what I'm expecting from JBD, but I'm a little nervous that it's a one dimensional defenseman that's having trouble with that one dimension of being a shutdown defense. But he looked lost in his own zone in Cape Breton. Yeah, uh, di- didn't look great. Uh, he had a neutral zone pinch that did not work out for him and it, it just it wasn't the right play at that time especially from a guy like jbd who like him pinching to create offense isn't going to do much he's not uh much of a puck carrier or offensive threat so it wasn't a well-timed pinch that uh, ultimately i'm pretty sure it led to a goal and then um the thing is ross like we used to have the famous saying if jbd you didn't really notice him that's a good thing well now it's like jbd you didn't really notice him you don't, it seems like you don't need to notice him. He, like, I just, I, I want JBD to succeed. I think he, he has the blueprint of a Dylan DeMello type guy, which can be very useful for a team. We saw that in Ottawa. You, you see that in Winnipeg, Ross. There's a lot of value in a guy like that. But I just don't think JBD can effectively be that guy. And, and maybe somewhere else he can be, but he's getting squeezed out here in Ottawa and obviously it's bad asset management. And this, this can transition into Lassie Thompson uh, losing a first round pick for nothing, but I'm kind of at a point where other than the fact that it, you're not getting anything in return from investing a first round pick. I'm not too upset one way or another. If JBD is no longer here. I know it sucks. And I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that, but I think a lot of Sens fans would agree. The standard has to be risen. It's the same thing I feel about Parker Kelly. Great guy, works hard, can play. But it's like the standard has to move up if they're going to make the playoffs. Like you can't just be a hard worker anymore. You can't just be a guy who's who's going to be there and try hard. You really have to up the standard. Who's going to go above and beyond to contribute? And it's probably unfair of me to mention Parker Kelly there. He did score a goal and had his best preseason game in Cape Breton uh, yesterday in his yeah. game. But, like, Drake Batherson made that goal pretty damn easy. Like, that was shades of the Spezza de Turris goal. <laughs> it was honestly, it was pretty similar. Yeah, no, that's fair. But uh, yeah, with Lassie Thompson being put on waivers, I mean, I kind of, I get. At this point, I agreed with the move where I had the the kind of um, ira- not irrational, but where I kind of had a problem with it was being five years later, four years later before making a decision on these first round picks. It's like if you understand they're not going to pan out, why not try to move them while they still have some sort of value and maybe not even pan out. Maybe it's more like if they don't fit into what you're doing there. Because it seemed like, and this is from 32 Thoughts, the podcast, Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman, these aren't two guys who are going to throw things against the wall and see what sticks. They believe the Senators organization has been unhappy with Lassie Thompson since before the pandemic. 
Since after he was drafted out of the Kelowna Rockets in the WHL, he went back to his native Finland and played for Eels. They wanted him to stay in Kelowna and work under Adam Foot and play in the Memorial Cup, which was ultimately canceled due to COVID. But, like, they've been frustrated with him since then, but they've still, like, just maintained, kept him. Like, if you, if, and I don't think it's a reason to do it. I think if a player wants to play at home or wherever they're most comfortable, they, they it's power to them. They should be able to play wherever they want as long as they're developing properly. Because remember, he was an offensive prospect. And then Pilsy were like, hey, he really rounded out his defensive game by going back. So we thought of it as a positive. But I just think it's it's wild that this surfaces the day after he comes out. Like, like who's giving that information? Has Elliot Freeman and Jeff Merrick just been sitting on that for years? Or is it like, oh, now he's in the spotlight? Or did a little bird chirp in there and be like, hey, we, we've been upset with him? Because that had to have come from the organization. Yeah, yeah, it, it must have. And and Ross, if you could quickly find it, can can you find the – it's been circulating on Twitter. Can you find the photo of uh, Lassie getting drafted on stage with Trent Mann? I want, I want to point something out uh, if you can pull it up while I'm chatting here. But at, at this point, Ross, like – I don't really care about that anymore. Like that shouldn't affect like that ultimately shouldn't affect why he was put on waivers. Uh, his decision to go back home how many years ago, like that hasn't affected his development or where he stands. 2019 it happened. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I just, I, I'm with you. I think if you could see things weren't going the way you want and it's not going to work here. I would have liked them. And I think a lot of sense fans had had this move set up for him to be traded for a middle round draft pick uh, last draft. I think that would have been a good move. How do you feel about those who are saying Lassie Thompson was one of the sense six best defensemen in training camp? Mm. I don't think he had a bad training camp Ross, but I mean, I, I, I'm playing uh, Eric Bransom and Travis Hamannick over him in the regular season, personally. I thought he was average at best. That's what I mean. Yeah, like, I don't think he was bad or or good. Look at, zoom in on um, Trent Trent Mann's face. Can you, can you do that for me? That's as close as we can go. Okay, well, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, I'm no body expert, uh, body language expert, body expert, body language expert. But that is an upside down smile. <laughs> like that is, he's trying to smile, but that is a sad face emoji. The way, if you look at the angles of his, of his mouth, like that is not someone that's like, we got our guy. Like I am fired up that this is the guy we're picking. I don't, I just saw that picture and I was like, is he frowning? Is man sad about this pick? Like the, normally you throw on a cheesy smile and you're like, this is a first round draft pick. We're stoked about this. I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into that, but I saw that and was like, that seems weird. Yeah, I mean, it's not during the actual photo. You can see everyone else is fiddling around, but no, I get it. It's definitely an upside down smile. <laughs> it's down. Hey, congratulations to Trent Mann. Pittsburgh Penguins have hired him. Shocker. With yeah, uh, Dubas the- collecting all the sins. He is, but in a in serious note, it's a decent like, hire. Like the- Go ahead. That's what he's doing. No, I'm making the face if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. It, it just feels like just poor asset management again. And I think what we have to do here, and, and again, no excuses is the theme of the season, but we have to separate what mopping up the a few extra mistakes is versus that, where it's just like, I'm not going to lose sleep over losing Lassie Thompson. But I'm certainly not going to give them a pass for it. And I think that the accountability has to be there about like, and if it's back to back, like the without the 2020 draft, where are the Ottawa Senators? Oh, like if if that San Jose pick and it very well could have been in the 20s. Yeah. Where are the Ottawa Senators right now? I don't know. Honestly, that's a world I don't even want to peek into, Ross. It would be so abysmal. Thank God for Tim Stutzla. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts for me are this is going to be an interesting game tonight. A little bit different preseason flavor with um, very close to both uh, teams icing their NHL and opening night rosters. So 
th- I think this one will feel a little better, Ross, because uh, we'll have lines that are properly meshed. Like the whole decor is there. Corpusalo is starting. So I think this will be a game where, like you mentioned, we can judge players a little more harshly and accurately. So I'm excited to watch tonight's game. Yes, I am as well. It's going to be a six o'clock start for the Eastern time zone because of the Atlantic one hour later. So you guys are going to be experiencing how I watch every game at six o'clock start. It's it's a great time to start hockey game. Good thing way. I don't live in mountain time, Ross. Otherwise, I don't know if this podcast could function properly having to do three different time zones. Three time zones would be top. Now, tomorrow on the show, we are going to have a fan who's been on both games out in the east coast cape breton and tonight in halifax mitch donnelly will be our send central citizen on on the ground my final my final thoughts on today's show is good luck to lassie thompson in anaheim i just want to say that it's almost like it could be a placeholder while jamie drysdale is still unsigned right shot defenseman and it is worth noting that if lassie thompson goes back on waivers the Senators would have the first chance to, well, he'd have to clear every other team, which is unlikely as well. But remember, if you claim him, he has to be on the NHL roster. Ottawa would have the first chance to claim him and send him down to the AHL before anyone else. If they want, if another team claimed him and wanted to send him down, Ottawa could be like, no, he's coming back to Belleville. So it's kind of a, we've seen it recently happen a couple of times. I think it was Alex Barre Boulay with uh, Tampa where yeah. he got claimed by another team and then went, got put back on waivers and ultimately ends up right back in Syracuse for Tampa's uh, AHL affiliate. So there is precedent there. I think I'm grasping at straws though. And honestly, I think Lassie Thompson probably tops out as a number six defenseman. I, I was going to say, Ross, I, if that happens, I'm not jumping on Twitter and refreshing being like, did the Sens get him back? Did the Sens get him back? Like, I don't know. It's just you develop them for four years only to let them walk. Yeah. Just it's, unfortunate. It's not great. I'll miss the Tom bomb, Pilsy. We didn't see it enough, but we didn't. it was fun while it lasted for Lassie Thompson. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. Like good, good guy. And we wish the best for him, but guest I, on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, that's, that's probably it for Lassie Thompson as a Senator. Yep. And he'll have a uh, a nice time making a team that has a lot of up and coming defensemen, but nobody really at the NHL level who you were like, oh wow, he's better. Now for those who are saying Travis Hamonic is the reason why uh, La- we lost Lassie, would you be confident with an Eric Brandstrom, Lassie Thompson third pair at the NHL right now? Because I wouldn't, and that's fair. I understand people have uh, very different opinions on Travis Hamonic. I just look at the decor as as Zuzu being the veteran back there the only guy over 26 years old and sure you can say what you want about thomas and shabbat i think that there is value having a guy who's 30 or more who's been through it who's seen it and a guy who's you know i don't know maybe maybe this is me kind of you know coping even though i've always been on board with the hammock signing as a six seven defensive which i still believe he'll be i thought jbd was going to come and and take that job Mm -hmm. pierre dorian told us at development camp that he said jbd has the inside track at the sixth defenseman spot he hasn't shown hashtag who wants it has hasn't really been very clear for JBD tonight. Now let's see what Hamannick does. Cause I have a hard and fast rule Pilsy. I do not judge veterans in preseason. Like we're seeing some media members judging Tarasenko, even though he had a goal and I thought played pretty well against Winnipeg on Friday. These guys have been in the league for 12 years. I think they'll be fine. So Carolina is when we start judging them harshly, but tonight I'm watching the bubble guys. Zach McEwen can't be making mistakes if he wants to be on this team on opening night. Like the other, like the Matthew Highmore, do you want it? Ridley Gregg, are you going to be a top six guy? Those are all questions I'll be watching for tonight. We'll chat tomorrow. Be a great show. Having someone who's been boots on the ground. We have an amazing guest coming up. Oh, later. I'm so excited for I'm so excited. We got to get meth back on too here before the regular season. So yes. lots to stay tuned for here on Locked On Senators. Have a great day, everyone. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. <laughs>